All right, we are streaming live to fill you in on the weather threats and impacts to Hampton Roads. We've had rain in the forecast. We talked about the possibility of flash flooding or excessive rainfall. We have a level one threat across the entire viewing area. That means there could be some isolated areas where we experience flash flooding, and that's what is going on right now as we take a look at our live high definition radar. You can see the flash flood warning that is out there right now it includes Isle of Wight, Southampton, Surrey and part of Sussex. All of this again, the heavy rain that has been slow moving. So this flash flood warning lasts until 1215 this afternoon. Now I want to show you how things have been moving. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop this over the last three hours. And as we take a look here, you can see how the rain is filling in. It's kind of backfilling and it's just been steady and heavy. If my director takes this full, I can do a little bit more with this and show you with our uh, telestration again you see the progression of the wet weather the cells themselves have not really been racing along maybe a little bit of an east to westward drift we've seen more of that heavy rain off to the north around petersburg and areas just to the north of petersburg a couple of flash flood warnings there issued earlier but you see those areas where we have the uh, yellow kind of shading with the radar that's indicating some pretty intense rainfall we can take a look at the rainfall rates and i'm just going to do this. This is by radar estimate. You're talking about a third of an inch per hour. Well, that in itself, you know, that's a good moderate to heavy rain. It's not the heaviest that we've ever seen, but the fact that it sits there and this is over the last three hours now taking you back. Let me go ahead and clear the screen so you can see what I'm talking about here over the last three hours. I've just shuttled back to 629 this morning. Look at how that area of yellow has pretty much been camped out over that same location. That's a three hour loop. So what was just oh, a third of an inch or so per hour has been adding up and there have been at times more intense rainfall, more on the order of say a half an inch or more per hour. So some heavy rain up there around Petersburg, between Petersburg and Richmond, uh, I-95, very, very wet right now. And we have our new uh, warning that was just issued this one until afternoon for areas including Ivor, uh, back out through Wakefield. And that's where the National Weather Service office is for Hampton Roads. That's why you see the center of the radar sweep right out there by their little regional airport in Wakefield. Uh, that is where the radar is, is housed. And that's why you see the center of the sweep right there. Now it does include portions of Isle of Wight. So you head out towards ponds and uh, areas just west of Central Hill, also up towards Dendron and Surrey County there. We've got some of that intense rainfall. Let's take a look, and again, this is by radar estimate. We'll take a look at how much precipitation has accumulated, and you can really see up there towards the Petersburg area, just north of Petersburg, up around Hopewell. Great little communities there, just outside the 13 News Now viewing area. But you take a look at how much rain has fallen by radar estimate, and it really does add up. These areas kind of shaded in that greenish yellow, over three inches of rain by radar estimate. So a lot of rain there around New Bohemia. They've seen more like an inch and three quarters or so. Garysville picking up over two inches, 2.8 inches, so almost three inches right there. So that's where we've seen some pretty heavy rain this morning. Now, as we zoom down into the new area again around Wakefield and you get into Surrey County, it hasn't been as much but we've still seen some pretty impressive rainfall adding up by the radar estimate there around Ellis Fork about an inch and a half and there's more rain continuing to fall. So that's the problem. You know, we have more of this heavy rain already over an inch and that creates the problem for the flash flooding. Now we'll go ahead and put this back up on the screen so you can see what's going on with the uh, flash flood warning. I'll put that up there and I do want to talk to you a little bit more about some of the communities that are impacted in this particular flash flood warning. Uh, it's West Central, Isle of Wight, and uh, also Northeastern Southampton, Southwestern Surrey, and Northeastern Sussex until 1215. And again, we were looking at rainfall. This is through a little bit after nine was when they were first issuing this. Uh, we had seen already between one and one and a half inches of rain, as I just showed you, and additional amounts up to about an inch are possible. So that could create the flash flooding. So we just want folks to be mindful. Uh, again, you're going to find some of this. The water may come up quickly over some of the roads. As always, we always stress, turn around, don't drown, don't take any chances trying to cross 
the roads when they are covered with water. And that has been uh, potentially the case for some of these areas. Now, aside from that, we've got more scattered wet weather in the forecast. We'll take a look down to the south. I want to show you some of the areas not under warning, but rain heavier down around Nags Head, back up through Kill Level Hills. It becomes lighter. Really, most of northeast North Carolina is dry right now. Across Hampton Roads, we're seeing some showers, and we'll zoom in, take you into Portsmouth here, and you can see around Hodges Manor, back over towards Boone. You get into uh, portions of Western Branch in Chesapeake. You've got some light showers there around Dock Landing. It extends over into northern Suffolk, so areas around Baileytown and back over towards uh, Gloversville. We've got some of that rain. Kings Fork, you're just kind of on the edge with some of that heavier rain just off to the northwest of your area into Isle of Wight. So while we're not seeing the rain everywhere where we have seen the rain setting up, we're just not seeing much movement. That is the concern. That's why we have the flash flood warnings that are out there. And I want to talk kind of bigger picture again. We do have this level one risk for pretty much the entire viewing area. So uh, I just know that we could see some heavier cells kind of setting up through about midday. There could even be a few stray storms. The problem is as they start to pop up and we're seeing a little more development now across portions of northern Chesapeake into northern Suffolk, these are kind of drifting slowly to the west. They could produce those heavier pockets and then produce one right after the other, right after the other. So those locally higher amounts are certainly possible. Other areas will see very little, maybe a quarter of an inch or a half an inch in some areas. But where we do get some of that training or you get these heavier downpours that are slow movers, that's where we get the warnings. Now, in addition to that, I want to talk to you about another type of flooding. This is tidal flooding, and you can see we have a coastal flood advisory up for the eastern shore. We're coming through high tide right now. As a matter of fact, I think we're about six minutes from high tide at Sewell's Point, and that is the official measuring gauge for Hampton Road. So as we take a look here, we do have that uh, potential for tidal flood. We're going to see minor tidal flooding up in Newport News in James City County, also along the James River in Surrey and Isle of Wight. Those areas influenced by the tide actually under a coastal flood warning. Early this morning, we've seen moderate tidal flooding at uh, Jamestown. And then over on the uh, bay side, as you get over to the Middle Peninsula and up towards the northern neck, we also have coastal flood warnings there. At Windmill Point, they were also dealing with minor, or excuse me, moderate tidal flooding there. And the same thing over at Nassau Wattics. Now, minor tidal flooding is expected right now for Yorktown around Hampton at Buck Road Beach, those areas, and Southside Hampton Roads, Lynn Haven Inlet, uh, areas along the Elizabeth River, just expecting minor tidal flood. So it's really one of those situations where we just need to continue to mind all of this and we'll keep you updated. Water levels generally expected to top out right around five feet or so. And when we talk about the tide levels, in case you're wondering, you may not know well, what's 4.9 feet or five feet mean. What we do every single day, there are two high tides and two low tides, more or less two within that 24 hour period, give or take a little bit. All right. We have a higher high tide and a lower high tide, and we have the same thing with the low tides. There's a lower low water, and then there's the higher of those two low tides. What we do is we take the average of the lower low tides and say, okay, that's the water level. And then every time there's a high tide, that's like a little mini flood. In this case, where we're looking at water levels reaching 4.9 to 5 feet, that's the amount of water above the average of the lower low tides. I hope that makes sense. Basically, that means we've got a water level at five feet above the average of the lowest tide that we see. All right. So if you live in an area that is prone to flooding, you probably already understand what these numbers mean. These are the numbers that we look at historically when we look back at major weather systems, whether it was one of the classic nor'easters or Hurricane Isabel or Irene or the different storms that have impacted our area. We've got numbers that we can compare and that's how we establish whether there's minor tidal flooding, moderate tidal flooding, major catastrophic. You know, we can gauge all of that on these numbers. And right now at 4.9 to 5 feet, that's just kind of the minor tidal flooding level. So areas that do have issues with those high tides, you've got it. You compound that, and I want to go back to the radar because when we take a look at this with the radar, you have 
a situation where you've got those tides running high and then on top of it, you're getting some more additional rainfall coming down. So as that rain tries to run off into the water, the water's already running high from the tides and it kind of exacerbates the flooding a little bit. So I do want folks, especially back here in Surrey and Isle of Wight and along the James River, stay very mindful that the water levels are coming up with the high tide this morning, okay? Other parts of the peninsula, really not seeing a lot right now, but we are gonna continue to watch that. Again, if you're just now joining this live stream and you're wondering, okay, what's going on? We do have a flash flood warning that was issued until 1215 for Isle of Wight, Southampton, Surrey, and Sussex. Again, it's radar indicated, but by radar estimates, we've already seen an inch and a half. And we could get another inch or so of rain as these move along very slowly. One more time, we'll take a look at this loop. And again, you get a feel for just how slow moving these storms are. So where we have that rain, you see these yellows, these uh, darker red, uh, green, yeah dark green to yellow and occasionally some orange kind of embedded in there. That's where you have those heavier pockets of rain. So areas right out around Wakefield and the National Weather Service, they're dealing with the very heavy rain. Uh, it continues out towards Waverly, down around Lumberton, Barrett Corner. All of these locations could be seeing some of that. Of course, we've got you covered here at 13 News Now. I'll just go ahead and finish up with a look at the forecast because there is some good news for you. While we have the rain out there and the flash flooding continues to be a concern in spots. I'll be watching this morning. Evan and Tim will have you through the afternoon. And then as we head into the evening, things are going to get so much better. Right now, temperatures are ranging from the upper 60s inland to low 70s. It's not going to warm up a lot. We do have more scattered showers in areas of locally heavy downpours. Temperatures today around 76. The low tonight back down to 68. Any lingering showers heading into the evening will taper off. And then we're going to see improvements after that. So mostly cloudy and we'll see uh, drier conditions towards sunrise. It becomes partly sunny. And if you're ready for some nicer weather, and I know I am, uh, we're going to see it coming up. Tomorrow looks pretty good. Thursday looks gorgeous. 77, mostly sunny. We're looking at partly to mostly sunny skies Friday into Saturday. Sunday looks good as well. A little bit cooler at 74 and just a low risk of a shower on Monday. Most of the models actually dry on Monday as well. So looking out over the next seven days. After we get through the potential for flooding rain today, things will be a lot better. Again, just keeping you updated on that potential for some locally heavy downpours. Again, we have a level one threat for excessive rainfall today. We've already had a couple warnings out to the west. We'll continue to watch it and we'll keep you updated on air, online, on our digital platforms as you're seeing this live stream right now. We will keep you updated throughout the day. Have a good one.